So one out of three engagements break up. Did you know that? So if you get engaged, one out of three people break it off. And that's for numerous reasons, and it's typically not people like you. It's other people who didn't put any energy into it or maybe aren't Christian or whatever, but Christians do too. But the point I was going to say is by reading those, it may give you a flavor of the kind of person. Now, again, you can't, when you're, you know, in a relationship, you can't go, okay, so, you know, do you smile a lot? Yes, I smile a lot. Um, I, I have always wanted somebody with, like, you know, more curly type hair. Okay, that's perfect. Oh, I, and I think blue, I want the person to wear blue, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I love that smile. You know, and you do all those kind of things. You don't do that. But you, some of the broader questions, there are tougher questions. Kathy and I wouldn't have passed it. Okay, so it is a, it's something to, to think about. Um, so I'm just going to leave it for you. That's not that I need to teach through it. I feel like I did plenty of that today. Um, I'm going to talk about a really important thing because I think all of you can not only, you need mentors, but you also can be mentors. So this, so I'm going to, I'm switching it off on this one, and then tomorrow I'm going to go back to a thing on relationships and then kind of look at your personal life and, you know, we'll go from there. But mentoring is a big deal. Now, mentoring, I, I want you to think of two things. The word mentor and the word discipleship as kind of the same thing. Because you'll hear at church, you'll hear people talk about discipleship sometimes more than you'd hear about mentoring. To me, they're almost interchangeable. But let me give you a definition. It's not in your notes. It's not going to come on yet. But... Um, here's what discipleship is, what mentoring is. It's a character-building relationship that takes what you've learned and you're passing it on to somebody else, okay? So that puts you as a mentor or you're the learnee, if you would, and they've done the same thing. So the scripture, which you probably have heard even while you've been here, is found in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And what, what that scripture says is, you know, what, and it's Paul teaching Timothy this, but, you know, what you've learned and heard from others, now I entrust to you, and you pass it on to others. It's that simple, okay? That happens if, are some of you working in the youth group here? Is that the story? So if you're hanging out with youth group kids, then you're kind of doing this, okay? If you're hanging out, you know, with, I mean, you'll, you'll see how this works. So for me, I never really thought much about this, and years ago, I think I might have had hair, I'm not sure, um, I was getting my PhD, and I needed to write my dissertation, so you know, you can write it any place, so I chose Maui. So our family pick, picks up, my kids are little, we pick up and we move to Maui for four months so I could write my, my PhD dissertation. And um, it was great, we homeschooled our kids. I was getting a PhD, but I couldn't do sixth grade math, but that's another problem. Um, and I had told so many people, they said, hey, when you go on a sabbatical, so sabbatical means rest, but it's also you're listening to God. Some of you are in this mode right now. You're listening to God. What do you want me to do next? What do you want, who do you want me to be next? Blah, blah, blah. And so I said, I'm going to listen to God, and I think he's going to give me more or less a plan for the rest of my life that could be familiar to some of you in terms of what you're thinking. So I, um, I found a rock, and um, you know, it was kind of this lava rock thing that you could sit it was almost like it was a chair just for me. And I felt like God gave me this little spot. It wasn't very far from our house or a little condo. And, um, and I sat there. And I, I sat there most days. And I had my journal. And I kept saying, God, what do you have for me? And I would hear the same thing every day. Mentor Doug. Mentor Mike. Mentor Dave. Mentor Craig. And I'd kind of like go, OK, OK, I got that. Now what? Okay, and, and in the work that I do, I thought, well, maybe there'll be more media, there'll be something, there'll be some books, there'll be all these different things, but I never heard any of that. All I heard was mentor Mike, mentor Doug, me me mentor Craig, you know, et cetera. Okay, so what I realized was that my legacy, one day your legacy, but my legacy may be not that I... Um, have spoken to a lot of people or that our website today a million people came on it or that I've written a few books and things. My legacy may be that I put energy into Craig. You'll never know who Craig is, but Craig, you know, I passed on pretty much everything I've got to Craig. So now Craig does it. He happens to be in San Diego and Doug um, is kind of the guru of youth ministry in the world, but everything I've got, I've kind of given off to Doug. And, and what's fascinating about that is I got these guys together afterwards when, when I moved back from Maui to back to California and I took them away for two nights to um, Big Bear Lake which is a mountain community above where we live and um, we sat in a cabin and I said to them hey so this is what I heard I have no idea what that means 
And it was really interesting because they told me how they wanted to be mentored. And what was interesting was, I call it personally tailored mentoring because Doug needed something different than Craig needed something different than Mike needed something different, if you see what I'm saying. Okay, so I want you to think for a minute about mentoring, and I want you to give me, everybody hasn't probably had mentors, some, but most of you have. Tell me about a mentor in your life and why they have either continued to be a mentor or how they've kind of influenced you. So somebody talk about your mentor, a mentor. Yeah. Cool. For like four or five hours about How cool is that? Yeah. So she's this much older person. It means she has experience and kind of wise. Not she's probably not cool as cool and groovy as you are, but she's she's pouring into your life. She's pretty cool and groovy for seventy. Okay. And what's funny is sometimes our mentors will fall, or sometimes our mentors burn out, or sometimes our mentors just fade away, not because they've done anything wrong, but we're just not hanging around them anymore, and they're not influencing us. Good, good input. Somebody over here? Yeah. Let's go. Now, and you met back. So you were here? I used to live here. You used to live here. Now you're, so that's how you knew her. Okay, awesome. Yeah. There's a mentor I've had. I actually recently met up with him the first time in two years or whatever wow. the other week. Yeah. And he's helped me out a lot, like with, specifically with, first of all, Jesus. Uh -huh. And also yeah. like being social and talking to people. Yeah. I used to be really bad at that. And yeah. He just helped me out with that. Yeah. He just saw me out and helped me out with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. You do a great job, too, on it. Really good, yeah. I talked to Nate. Nate. He's so. a very similar personality. Yeah. He's been through a lot of the same things that I've been okay. through. Yeah. And uh, he's telling me something and I'm being stupid, so that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's neat. That's really neat. So, I mean, and again, you may find uh, mentors or at least peer mentors here or find, you know, your Nate or Morgan or, you know, other, other people around here. Um, it's funny, Doug, who is, um, again, if you looked up Doug Fields, you would go, whoa, this dude has done a lot. But Doug um, said to me one time, Jim, I don't remember any of your Bible studies. I was his youth pastor. I don't remember really any of your Bible studies, but I remember how you treat Kathy and how you talk uh, you know, with other people, and that's what I've learned. And I thought, how interesting, because I pour my life into you know, thinking about speaking and Bible studies and all this kind of stuff. This guy goes, I don't remember any of that stuff. I just remember how you treat your wife when, you, when I come over and you know, those kinds of things. And really, we want to have mentors who can teach us important things. But part of it is we also want mentors who just kind of, you know, do life and help us do life. So I want to give you four biblical uh, models for mentoring. And they kind of blend together and they kind of don't. But the first model is Jesus and his disciples. Okay? And uh, Jesus and his disciples. So what I'm going to call that is being real. So we need mentors in our life who are real. So think about this. Jesus lived with these guys. They, they did what you're doing, sort of. Now, there were probably times where Jesus actually taught them formally, but most of the mentoring that went on was informal, and they kind of did life together. Do you think that if there were 12 disciples that were living mostly together? I mean, Peter was married, so there's, we don't exactly know how all this works. But, you know, these people hung out all, all the time. They wouldn't have always liked each other even. They could have gotten fights. They could have, um, you know, they would have had fun. They would have played games. They would have gone fishing. They would have done all these different things. But pretty much the way Jesus taught his disciples, not others, because he taught the Sermon on the Mount. He did formalized teaching, but not very much of it. What he mainly deal, did was Jesus was just being Jesus, and he was being real. So that's kind of Jesus' model, just hanging out with people. Okay, so that's kind of good news for us because we can all do that. Some, sometimes we'll go, oh, but I don't know the Greek like Dane knows, or I don't know this or that. But the truth is, is that if you hang out with people, it's going to pay off. I find that, you know, people that I hang out with, they'll use a phrase or a word, and they're kind of in mentoring. Like I have a friend who always says the word cranky, and he's totally a mentor in my life. He's older than me. And he goes, oh, man, you know, I got so cranky about that. And then all of a sudden I started using the word cranky. I don't have any idea why. Not that that's like a good thing to do. But 
uh, you know, real life um, is, is a key one, okay? Secondly is this mentor was, do you know the story of Eli and Samuel? And so Eli is the old guy, Samuel is the kid, and uh, his mom, Hannah, had prayed uh, because she was infertile, and she had prayed and wasn't able to have a baby, and then she had the baby, so then, this always cracks me up in the Old Testament, then she gave the baby to the Lord, and Eli kind of took care of the kid, you know, as he got older. But the interesting side to it was, in that story, Samuel is asleep in this room, Eli is asleep in this room, they didn't exactly have bedrooms like we have, and and Samuel, here, here's something. And so he thinks it's Eli because he doesn't know how to listen to the word of God. And it was God speaking to him. I mean, you know, wow, amazing. So then he goes and says, you know, what, what can I do for you, basically? And Eli said, it wasn't me. Go back to sleep. Kind of bugged him, probably. So he did it three times. And he said, go back, go back to sleep. On the third time, it, it, Eli kind of goes, wait. God must be speaking to him. So he told him how to hear the word of God. We need mentors on a spiritual basis like that. Who's going to teach us the word of God? One of the cool things that you're experiencing here at Anchor is that there are people who are teaching you the word of God. Now, when you leave Anchor, you still need places. So for me, there's a guy named Andy Stanley. He is a friend of mine. He, Andy lives in Atlanta, Georgia. His wife, Sandra, wrote the foreword for my latest book. I mean, I, do, I know these people well, but I'm, I hear the word of God through Andy because I have a wonderful pastor. I mean, I love, 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 love my church. But Andy is my Bible teacher. And so I, I was so funny. We were talking about something, a book that Andy was going to come out. And I go, oh, it's probably on this, this, and this. He goes, how do you know? I go, I, I listen to you every week. And so, again, who's going to teach you the word of God? You, the, today, you have it so much easier and so much better than any generation because you've got people who can, who can actually, you can go to online and hear. Let's say that... Uh, you know, Chris Thomas next week is um, awesome and he, you know, he does teaching. He probably is on digital someplace. So you could kind of then learn from him. Pick and choose, but find people who are going to, you know, play into your life. It's a huge way to get mentored, okay? Do you have to know these people? No. Do you have to have a relationship with these people? No. Sometimes it's better to have that. My, my pa Monday, I noticed that on Monday the 10th, it's a Monday night, our pastor and his wife asked Kathy and me, I just saw this through my office, so it's not like I'm all hot on this. I mean, I don't know all this. But we're having dinner with him. Well, it's not a mentoring dinner. It's more, a, I mentor him more. I'm older than my, my pastor's 43. But there's times when I'll go, hey, I want to unpack what you just said. It was awesome. And then we have this dialogue about faith. So we kind of switch sides. Sometimes I'm Eli and he's Samuel, and sometimes I'm Samuel and Eli. But, you know, again, like even Andy, Andy Stanley, he's younger than me, but man, he's my, I'm Eli. He's Eli and I'm Samuel on him. Okay. So anyway, that's another way of looking at it. That's another form. Thirdly is Moses and Joshua. So Moses chose Joshua, okay? And so some, let's pretend that you're, you become a youth pastor, okay? And women could be youth pastors, men could be youth pastors, or at least I, that's my opinion. Some of you might not think women should be youth pastors. I don't know. But anyway, so you're Moses and Joshua. I get it. So, so you find somebody else. Homer is in the, Homer is a, you know, ministry that's uh, an international ministry that I'm a part of. I'm the president. I'm just in the process of doing the succession where I'm going to keep speaking and writing, but I'm not going to be the president. So I'm going to pass the torch to somebody, see? And so that's another thing that we saw in here that Moses gave Joshua responsibility. And so he, he passed on his wisdom. He even did this. In the book of Numbers, he, Joshua, he sent Joshua to go check out what was on the other side. So he was in the process of, you know, going into the promised land, and he sent Joshua. Joshua was in the minority report. There were 12 um, men that went. Two of them thought it was a good idea to keep going, and, and 10 of them thought it wasn't. Moses took Joshua's opinion. So kind of cool, okay? So we find people who are going to pass the torch, okay? Eventually, your 70-year-old friend is going to get old, and there's going to be certain things that she's taught you that maybe you're then to teach them. So it doesn't have to be like a mantle or a youth pastor illustration, but hey, you learn some stuff. So now, you know, who is that person that's, you know, 15 that you're going to hang out with, or as you get older, who's, you know, your age or whatever it might be. And then the last one is close to the Jesus model, and it's Paul and Timothy sharing life. So it's kind of a father-son relationship. Now, Timothy had birth parents. He had, Timothy had a birth mom that we know about, birth dad that we know about, but Paul called Timothy his son in the faith. And so they shared life. 
So that's another um, style of a biblical model of mentoring that I think is you know, Im important for us to kind of to get to know. So with that in mind, um, do you have any mentors like that? More specifically, yeah. I think it's going to be either somebody that you are being real with or somebody that's sharing life. Because I think, you know, I mean, in some ways, Moses could have done that for Joshua. He probably did. But I think it's more the people who are going to encourage you are the people who are kind of around you. And, you know, so that's more like his dad, you know, encouraged him. And, and encouragement is a form of mentoring because that's, like, that's one of my spiritual gifts is, um, for me, is that gift. And so my job is to encourage people. And so I need to do that, and I need to do that well, because it's, it's one of the spiritual gifts that God has gifted me with, where somebody else might have the spiritual gift of evangelism. I don't, that doesn't mean I don't share Christ. It just means that my spiritual gift is, you know, coming alongside people and, and encouraging them, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a spiritual gift called the... Have you guys done spiritual gifts here? Yes. Yeah, okay. So there's a spiritual gift called the gift of exhortation. And what's fascinating about it is the gift of exhortation is somebody who encourages, but also who can do what your Bible teacher and your dad do, too, who can kind of come alongside. You don't want them to be... Like, I'm going to talk on criticism and negativity tomorrow. You don't want them to be super hypercritical, only critical of you. But sometimes they're the ones who call, a, you know, call it like it is and go, hey, dude, you know you're gonna have to buck it up here. You're gonna have to make this happen. That's encouragement in a different form. So we need both. But what I was gonna also say, Brent, was that your, your friend who's only 26, so he's only a little bit older than you, he can be a mentor. Because you can have peer mentors. You, know? you can also have, uh, well, I'll explain who, who some of these other mentors are. So anyway, the, we want this, with this biblical model. Now with the biblical model, there was a, uh, I'm gonna take it in a different direction. I'm almost gonna say the same thing, but I'm gonna take it in a different direction. I think there's four types of, of mentoring that take place, and I totally ripped this off from a guy named Bobby Clinton who wrote a book on mentoring, and he is a professor um, at Fuller Seminary, and he's really a cool guy. So I'm totally ripping it off. This isn't my stuff, this is his. So types of mentoring. First one is intensive mentoring. And you can look at intensive mentoring as literally um, somebody is, is discipling you. It's a spiritual director. It's a coach. Sometimes it's a counselor. My friend Henry Cloud says that he disciples people. He's a counselor, but he disciples them, right? And so this is kind of, you're, you're, you're in some ways, you're having intensive mentoring here. And, you know, probably the majority of the mentoring that takes place is with the people that you guys know, but you're having intensive mentoring here. It's a, it's a, it's a program. And so it's like, I mean, you've got to be going at times, oh my gosh, I have way too much content in my head right now, and I just need to, like, go to the beach. Um, but intensive mentoring is a really good form of mentoring, um, but it takes a time commitment, it takes effort, it takes energy, exactly what you guys are doing. Okay, but you're doing it in mass as opposed to more of a one-on-one -on -one type thing, and you can do that too. Secondly, is occasional mentoring. So this takes place when you're with somebody who you know really speaks into your life, but you don't see them all the time. And again, it could be a counselor, a coach, a, you know, even in the using you know uh, alcoholism words, a sponsor. But basically, this person comes into your life for a season, um, and or even seasonal, okay? So I have some occasional mentors who I meet with three times a year, sometimes on purpose, sometimes not. They're an occasional mentor. I'm not doing life with them, so I don't, I, they're not always speaking into my life, but it's kind of, it can be formal, it can be m informal, but again, it's occasional, okay? So you wanna look for those kind of people. There's a, a guy who lives in the Bay Area, in, in uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and he flies down four times a year, his church pays for it, and I pick him up and we go out to lunch, we have a great time, sometimes we just laugh and mess around, but he always has questions, and then he would call this occasional mentoring, so I spend the day with him, basically. You know, I mean, I pick him up about 10 and I drop him off about four, so it's not the whole day, but um, we just, we hang out. And literally, we both like the beach, so we walk on the beach, we go eat at a place at the beach, and then we, um, but we go through his agenda, not my agenda. He would call that occasional mentoring. That's a really cool thing to do. And you could even do that with, um, 
you know, with Zoom or whatever. So you really, let's say you really develop a relationship with Dane. I'm not telling you all to have him as your mentor. Um, but, you know, you could say, hey, Dane, could I talk to you twice a year when I'm gone and just kind of ask you a bunch of questions about something? And all of a sudden he became a, a mentor, okay? Nate, so, you know, Nate, can I, can I keep up some of the conversations that we have? Can I periodically get in touch with you? Cool. So the next one is what we call passive mentoring. And passive mentoring is interesting because it's people who are mentoring you, but, but they don't know you. So some of my mentors I met after they died. Does that sound weird? So C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis totally is a mentor to me. I read C.S. Lewis books. I've read all of my... You guys had to read The Great Divorce, right? Is that what I heard? Okay, I heard somebody just killed it, aced it. It was amazing. You, right? Did you write out your Great Divorce longhand? No, that was definitely Who did it? <laughs> okay, I heard yours was amazing. Yeah. Uh, from Rick. He told me it was amazing. So anyway, C.S. Lewis has mentored me. So I think sometimes, not what would Jesus think, I should, but I'll think, well, what would C.S. Lewis do in this, in this occasion? Because I kind of know this guy, but I don't know him because he was dead, you know, long before I became a Christian, right? So again, passive mentoring is not a bad thing, okay? So uh, Rick has passively mentored a lot of people because he writes some books, okay? That's cool. So who are your passive mentors? Who's, that, who's somebody maybe even in the writing world or in the speaking world that you really don't, kind of don't know, but they have mentored you? Anybody want to mention somebody? Yeah. Sadie Robertson. Okay. So who is it? Sadie Robertson. Sa Sadie Robertson. Okay. David Wilkerson. David Wilkerson. Wow, he's got a story. Has he continued to mentor you, or was it his story that mentored you? Um, his sermons are like So you listened to his sermons in New York. I mean, his New York sermons. It's exactly what, in some ways, what I'm doing with, with Andy. You know, so you're really being influenced by David. I didn't even know David. I haven't heard about him for a long time. Yeah, oh, okay. So you're still listening to his sermons. Yeah. You're amazing. Good for you. Crossing the switchblade was his, his story. Yeah. Uh, Bob Goff. Bob Goff. Okay. So Bob Goff is, you know, Bob Goff has mentored, I mean, his, through his books and through his amazing teaching, he has mentored so many people. Plus, he's like, I don't know if you, all of you know who Bob Goff is, but look him up. If, put, put one of his books on your reading list, um, any of them. He just had a new book come out. But he's a pretty dynamic, amazing guy. Now, how, do you, how, how did you find Bob Goff? Uh, he spoke at our school when I started He spoke at your school? <coughs> Whoa. I think he spoke a couple times. Really? He's a great guy. We speak at a lot of the same conferences, and so I just, I have such a... Uh, uh, admiration and respect for him. I make him my passive mentor of the, of the day. He does. His story is going to Disneyland. Huh? Um, yeah, he doesn't really have an office, but he acts like he does. I have, like, I've yeah. heard from jo Jody Erickson Tata. Yeah, Johnny Erickson Tata. Um, Joyce Myers. Joyce Myers. Okay, great. So what I'm trying to say is, no, you, you might, what I'm trying to help you understand is you may have more mentors than you think. Passive mentors are cool. They're not the only kind of mentoring, okay? And then kind of we've already talked about this next one, but I'm, I'm taking him through the biblical model, but you also have this where peer modeling and mentoring. So peer relationships are really key. So what I'm saying to people is all of us need mentors, all of us need peer models, peer relationships, and then we need to be mentoring. So I think the healthiest people and I'm saying this to every one of you, and I kind of want to lay this on some of you, that, the, that you want to make sure that you have mentors, you want to make sure that you're in a peer relationship with somebody who's pushing you in a good way and challenging you in a beautiful way to you know, be all that you can be, and then also be a person who's mentoring somebody. And um, even at your age, I mean, there's people who you can mentor. No mentor ever feels they're perfect. Like I gave an illustration about... Um, in the earlier about this one guy that we were talking about the closer illustration that they've prayed 20 minutes a week and um, he never would have thought he was a mentor be because he goes I'm, I, you know I'm, I'm just a regular guy he's not he's a Christian leader but I'm just a regular guy how could I mentor you know Jim and Kathy well he was doing it greatly that's a healthy mentor because you don't in certain ways some mentors you don't want them to be going let me mentor you okay that's makes me want to run from them so find people, um, especially in the peer modeling, who just are people who challenge you. My, my small group, they challenge me like crazy just by being alive and by talking. It's not like they're even talking to me about challenging things. So in your notes, um, I have something called the Ten Commandments of Mentoring. And I'm not sure 
I have that on here. Let's see if I do. I don't think I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So here are the Ten Commandments of any good mentoring thing. This is one of these talks that isn't like you walk out and you go, okay, this was the greatest thing I've ever heard. But I want to tell you, this content stuff on mentoring could be, you know, life transforming for you. So you got to have a relationship with him. Or even I have a relationship with C.S. Lewis because I, I learned about him, okay? Um, regularity is your best command, is your best way to do it, but it doesn't have to be. Remember, we talked about occasional too. Purpose. What's the purpose? So you should have a purpose for, within your mentors. So it doesn't mean that you know, just hanging out with the 70-year-old is really cool and she is a mentor, but there may be something where one time you kind of go, I really want to ask her some questions or I want to work through, how did you do this when you were my age? And all of a sudden, boom, you're off and running. So you know, finding a, pur uh, a purpose. Accountability. A lot of times mentors can give accountability. Communication. So you're communicating back and forth. It's not a one-way street. Um, in a lot of mentoring. It is if you've got a mentor who you're listening to on you know, digital or whatever. Um, confidentiality. So if somebody's going to use me as a mentor, they'd better trust that I'm not going to tell their story. Okay. And um, you know, confidentiality is key. Also, there's life cycles of mentoring. So you've got to be aware of that, that. That's one of the, ten, uh, the ten commandments of it, is that you know, there's a season. You're going to have a season. You had a season with that guy. And now he's, he's not your mentor. In fact, he probably needs you to be his mentor because he's not done so well. But the point being is that we'll have cycles. You know, you can't have life cycles when you get married with your spouse. You, but you can have life cycles with mentors, okay? Um, evaluate it. Is it worth it? Okay. Expectations. What are your expectations? If you're going to hang out with somebody, what's your expectation? Oh, you were just fixing your hair. I thought you had a question. No. Well, you can fix your hair all you want. I'm just jealous that you have hair and I don't. Um, and, then, and then closure. Sometimes it's really good to get closure. I, I had kind of this, I don't know why I'm tell, telling deathbed stories, but this guy who was my, one of my major mentors, I did his funeral about two years ago in the middle of the pandemic, and um, he was dying, and he lived in San Antonio, Texas. And so I showed up. I called his wife and said, hey, I'm going to be in San Antonio can I come by? I'd like to see, his name was John, I'd like to see John. And she goes, oh, that'd be great, he, he would love that. So I, after I said that, I had lied, because I wasn't going to be in San Antonio unless he was going to let me do it. So I bought a ticket, this cost me $522, I totally remember this, because you could get tickets at that point for probably $300, but this was a last minute ticket. So I paid all kinds of money. I flew to San Antonio. I did, they, she said, can you stay at the house? I said, oh no, I can't, I got to get back. Meaning I got back to a hotel near the airport because I spent the whole day with him. But it was closure because it was my last time with him. I did his funeral, but it was my last time with him on this earth. And we talked about really good stuff. It was incredible. But we had this kind of closure time. That wasn't for John. He was getting ready to go see Jesus. It was for me. See, but I needed closure to kind of put that time. And then I talk, at the funeral, I just talked all about him and how he influenced my life, etc. Okay. So now I'm going to ask you four questions, and I want you to think about each one of these, and then, um, so here's my questions. Who have been your mentors? And so in those notes, now I, I ask you, to, some of you were able to do this, but if you could, I'd like you to write um, who have been, you know, some mentors or people who have influenced you. I, I literally want you to write it down, and I'm going to give you a whopping one minute to do this because I want you to talk to me when, when we're done about um, a few more than you've mentioned already, than a couple you've mentioned. So I'd, I'd sing for you, do, 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 but I don't think you would want me to sing. And it's okay if you say, I don't have any mentor. <laughs> Okay, almost a minute. Um, somebody who hasn't spoken yet, name a mentor that came to you that you thought, guy, after you're listening to that, you go, maybe they did mentor me. Give me, give me the name of somebody. Uh, my brother Luke. Your brother, Luke. 
He's older? Yeah. Cool. So we've got a brother. We've got dads. My associate pastor, John. Your associate pastor. Cool. A pastor. That's usually who mentors us, just people who, you know, are kind of random. It's funny, you should tell some of these people this. I don't know if Ethan knows this, because it's the kind of thing that as a youth group leader, you never think you're influencing somebody, and then all of a sudden you get this letter and you go, oh my gosh, you know, it was worth it. You know, whatever, a, a positive affirmation to Ethan. Does a therapist count? Sure. I met with him for like two years. Totally, that dude influenced you greatly. Yeah. yeah, so having a therapist, that's a form of discipleship. You know, people don't think it is, but it is. You know, the Bible says where there's no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. That guy discipled you. Yeah. Sherry Dyer. Sherry Dyer. Who's that? Um, someone I used to know who lived here. Yeah. And she randomly texted me like a week ago. How cool. She's been texting me ever since. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. Isn't that something? That's powerful when that kind of thing happens. Okay. Um, the reason I, I did it again, because I asked you at the beginning, I realized I am losing my mind uh, now that I get older, but I asked you twice because I wanted you to think through it after we did the teaching, too. Secondly, have you been, has anybody in here been through any kind of formal, and I'm going to just say Brent has because he, he got some therapy and he did it for two years, that's, that's formal. Anybody been through any kind of formal mentoring process? What was it? Uh -huh. Oh, okay, so you were, you were going through a process. Yeah. She took you through a process. Awesome. That, I used to do that with kids. I'd go through, in youth ministry, I'd go through like a booklet or something, but that booklet was like how to, I mean, it started with how to become a Christian if they weren't a Christian, and then it would move on to other things, so it was a process. Yeah, good. Anybody else here do that? Wow. Was kind of doubling up on his job and helping him almost do his job. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is I went through about a, probably roughly a year to a year and a half of marriage counseling with an ex-fiance. Yeah. Yeah. That's, there's an interesting story. I just, you just fascinate me. I want, we need to talk. Uh, but like, that's a beautiful thing. Because to be honest, it was hard and terrible. You did it for a year and a half and you said ex-fiance, so that meant it didn't. But what that did was that helped you discern some issues that, saved your butt, to be honest, <laughs> okay. Yeah, and now you've learned some things through that process that will make it more effective as time goes on. Awesome. My parents are my biggest mentors. Yeah, that's great. And they're, but they're, but your parents are, but they're not probably doing something formal. Like this, this question was more, have you gone through anything kind of like any kind of formal mentoring process? So they didn't take you through something, they've just been with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, good. I'm not trying to debate it. I was just trying to see if that if that was the case. Awesome. Usually, you don't hear that parents do the formal stuff. Psychiatrist. So again, it's a very similar thing to Brent's, where you're with somebody who you know you're sharing your life with, and they're pouring into you and giving you some insight and actually correcting things and working through some stuff that could be really beneficial to your physical and emotional health. Yeah. I call you Trent. I keep calling you Brett. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know what? It's, I had a guy who was a roommate in college. I'm so sorry. The, thank you for doing that. Um, when somebody, if somebody critiques me, please, if I do that, please just tell me, okay? Um, I had a friend who was, uh, for a whole semester, he was my roommate. And I thought he called, he said his name was Mark. <laughs> so I called him Mark one day, for a long time. So one time, somebody called him Art. And I go, why is he calling you Art? He goes, well, that's my name. And I go, dude, I've been calling you Mark. He goes, I know. We, we, we played basketball together, and I'd kind of go, Mark, Mark. But it sounded enough like Art that nobody ever corrected me that I called him. And one guy did say, I just thought that was his name, that you actually called him Mark. That was you know, another name for him or something. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I keep, I keep calling you Brent. Oh, yeah, I was so proud that I was saying Brent because I had a doubt. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so anyway, that, um, that is just a really, it, it's important at times for us to think about going through some time of formalized or to give people formalized. 
If you could choose mentors today, who would they be and what would you want to receive from them? Okay. So now I want you to think about that. And I, I want you to tell me, tell me a name. I don't care who, the, I'm not going to know their name, but tell me who you would want them, who would you want to mentor you and what would you actually like to get out of it? Now, all of you got to think while pe other people are thinking. Yeah. Trent? Um, I've kind of just been chit-chatting with James, but I want to ask him to mentor me. Like, biblical knowledge and stuff like that. Yeah. This, this guy knows his stuff. I'm, I'm sitting back there in the last two sessions that he's done, and I just go, he's amazing. Plus, he's like a comes out of You know, you want somebody to mentor you with biblical knowledge, but he's, he's like, you want to hang out with him. You know, you want him to rub off on you. Yeah. Okay. I really want my best friend Paige to teach me how to listen to God better. She's okay. Just, she's got a lot of she does that well. She's really prioritizing that. Yeah. Like with the, an the question that I just asked you, how many of you actually came up with a, a name that maybe you would think about? You don't have to share again, but just put your hands up if you came up with a name. And then put your hand up if you're going, you know what, I don't really know yet, but I'm going to think about it. Put your hand up on that, too. Okay. The reason I said that is because this could be, I mean, we've gone through a lot of stuff just in, I mean, the amount of content you guys get is just crazy from everybody, I, I realize. Um, and I sure don't think what I'm saying is more special than anybody else. But I do think that that question right there could be very beneficial to you. If you walked out of Anchor House on um, May, May what? 19th, and you had a plan to, to uh, be connected to a mentor. And again, your mentor may be here, but it's also, it's like you, you know, all 20 of you plus of you can't want Dane or, you know, some people because they're, they also they have other things going on. But the point being is if you could do that, it would be well worth your, um, your effort here because you really have been mentored. This is a mentoring experience. I'm watching it. Even the mentoring of, you know, you guys have to share with cleanup and all those kind of good things. I mean, that's, that's a good lesson, okay? Are you mentoring anyone now? Is there anybody in here who's mentoring? Or has been? Yeah. Well, okay, let's hear it. Uh, short, Either one. Cool. That's mentoring. That, and you know what? Caleb's life will be changed forever because he had a guy like you stick with him like that. And even when you're away, the cool thing now is, you know, there's this amazing thing called the World Wide Web. You can internet somebody. You can DM somebody. You, can, you know, it's amazing. You know, a lot of that kind of stuff that we used to not be able to do, we can still do. However, there's nothing like when you go back home to go get the coffee and do the face-to-face -face stuff. Have you finished your food? Okay. Hey, and your voice is getting better, too. Yeah, it is. Um, I, I do worship ministry back at home, and uh -huh. I still, like, teach music. Yeah. Like, music lessons and stuff, so, like, mentoring those kids that I sure. teach. Sure. Um, but also, like, doing worship ministry, like, yeah. um, I do like doing worship as well, but, like, the, um, on our youth worship team. Awesome. Um, I've really just been, like, like, the youth worship leaders have been a big mentor to me. Yeah. Right. Um, I mentor the younger kids under me, but like some of them aren't even like younger than I am, but I just mentor them by like kind of just showing them. They'll watch me and they yeah. just kind of see what yeah. I'm doing. And, you know, I'll like talk to them and I'll be like, hey, like, what are you doing in offerings? And it's just like um, it's a really cool thing. No, it's really neat. That I feel to do that. No, that's, that is really cool. Re remind me where you're from. Colorado. Colorado, Colorado. yeah. <laughs> Half of these people are from Colorado. Um, <laughs> One of the things that she was just saying is when we're, you know, we're, we're helping somebody in worship, you know, we're, we're teaching them how to be more effective as worship leaders or whatever. But it's kind of what Dane said today. When we're doing that, we're also mentoring because they're watching how we treat them, how they don't get a lot of attention from other people, okay? And so they're getting quality attention. They're seeing how you, how you act, how you interact. Um, you know, that's, that's mentoring. So know that you're, you all are probably doing some mentoring or have done mentoring, and you might not even realize it was mentoring, okay? 
So anyway. I have a question. Yeah. So are you, is there like supposed to, is there like is it supposed to be like you pick your mentees or they pick you or does it matter? I think usually you you pick because they're not going to walk up to you. Dane's not going to walk up to any of you and go, hey, I'd like to mentor you for the rest of my life. That's not going to happen. So I think you have to go to them. But I, I don't think you say to them, will you, 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 you'd better be pretty specific on what you need or you just say, can I, like I, with, with my friend John, it started by me saying, hey, can we just go have lunch? And then it went, can we have lunch again? Have got these questions. So it, it turned into a mentoring relationship because some people don't, know how to mentor or they don't know what that means or they're afraid of the time factor and so I think you know until you know exactly what you want from them like my friend Gary who flies down I know what he wants and I'm glad to give it to him but if he said I need this every week I need a meeting every week I'd probably say Gary I love you like crazy and I would do that if you felt like that but I'm not your therapist I'm not your whatever I don't have the time I can't do that so some people won't do that as well. Like, I love when people say, hey, my name's not, you know, Brent, it's Trent. Because I love that because, you, because, you know, they're, they're telling you how you, what you want. We have to, and sometimes with mentors, we have to say, hey, would you be willing to have lunch with me a few times a year? Would you be willing to have lunch with me on a regular basis? And a few times a year, turn, like for mine, would you be willing to have lunch turned into every Wednesday we had lunch for three years? I mean, I'm sure we had Wednesdays that we didn't have a lunch, but... We, that was all of a sudden that became sacred. Yeah. So anyway, that's the world of mentoring, and it kind of it 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 on several levels of why you're here at Anchor and what you're doing. Um, this could relate for you as time goes on. It's not one of those you know super sexy you know talks, but you know the when you really look at how people even in the Bible were influenced, they weren't influenced by you know, the 25 minute sermon, they were influenced by people's lives. And that's why I started with those four biblical models and, um, and then kind of, you know, put it into it. But I really want to encourage you to have mentors, be a mentor, have peer relationships. It's part of, it will help you be um, stronger. The, the guy that was mentor, I don't know what his story is, and I could be totally wrong on this, but I'm just going to pretend. But the guy who kind of was mentoring him and then he died, and then I mean, I mean he just faded and he kind of blew it. I'm guessing he didn't have a whole lot of accountability. And um, yet he knew what to do because he was doing a good job mentoring. But then he probably didn't have many mentors who were talking to him, holding him accountable, things like that. So keep people around you who can make you a better person. Okay? Let me pray. I just realized that Dane opens in prayer and closes in prayer, not me. So, Lord, thank you for these women. Thank you for these men. Um, thank you for them all coming here together to try to figure out um, who they can be, what they can be, and how they can learn from you in an environment like this. And I pray, God, that you would speak to each and every one of them, not just about mentoring, but about um, the, all the things that are being thrown at them in a beautiful way. But anyway, thank you for them. Thank you and bless them and help them to be, again, your people. And more than anything else, we pray that not only that we could gain knowledge by being here at Anchor, but that we could also um, walk out of here um, stronger, deeper, firmer, greater foundation Christians. So we love you, and we pray this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen.